So I have imported from the Nikon D850 uh, card the nine exposures that I made uh, for this light painting demonstration. Um, I did this in the portrait mode, so the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that we... Now I'm going to increase the size here. You're going to see that most of it looks fairly dark, but that's okay. It's supposed to look that way. This is the darkest one. Now, um, the first thing that I do is I, I correct the white balance, and I do that... I've done this previously where I have a... Um, card, um, a gray card that I light with the flashlight, and then I create uh, a preset that is for that, and so I can go here and just do white balance for, and all nine images are white balanced against the gray card. I have them all selected, and I right click, edit in Photoshop, but open as layers in Photoshop. And this takes a little bit of time. So now we can see we have all nine uh, of the images. And I, I purposely did a very dark exposure. I just held the flashlight a couple of feet away from the setup so that um, I can create the bottom layer of this layer stack. So I'm going to take this one and move it all the way down to the bottom. Um, now you'll notice that since these are all in normal blend, the topmost layer uh, hides everything else. So, but the, here's the magic. We're going to select all but the bottom and change the blend mode from normal to lighten. Okay, now at this stage you can start to see how the um, uh, the light painting is going to work, but we got a lot of work to do on this. So the next thing I do is I turn off all but the bottom one. Now this one happens to be the background exposure, and I don't like um, doing the background, changing the background exposure until I've done the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one to the very top. Yeah. So now I can see, you can see the background exposure and it wasn't exposed for the setup. So I'm going to turn this one off. Now I turn this one on, the lowest one, and you can see this is lighting up this area here. Now it doesn't really matter which uh, way you start this, um, but the key thing here is to put in an adjustment layer. Now, a lot of times I just use a levels adjustment layer, and another one of the key things here is to make this a clipping mask. Now, you can do that several ways. You can go down to the little icon here that creates the clipping mask, or you can go up to Layer, Create Clipping Mask, that way, you'll notice that once again the um, the mask moves over a little bit. Let's take this way. And then the third way is to actually use the keyboard shortcut, which is Option Command G. So let's try that. Option Command G, and you can see again this has moved over. All right. Now that we've got a clipping mask and it's a layers. Um, I like to move the, the contrast slider, and I'll move it in and out to see what I want here. And actually, I think what I want here, because I know this is, this is mainly the exposure for um, the foreground here, I don't want this particularly bright, so I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. Now, I can also, and this is very important, create a mask on the actual... Um, image. So, for example, if I take black as my color and a brush, and since these are things that I really want to get rid of, I'm, a, I'm going to be at, say, 100% opacity, and you can see how I can just get rid of 
some of these highlights there. Now, you know, I don't have to be really careful about this because I can always come back in and do that. Now, one of the other things about this is that you could actually go onto the first one, and if you wanted to get rid of the little spectral highlights, just take the healing brush and we can get rid of those too. Healing brush works really well for this kind of thing. So let's turn this back on. All right. So now we have the first layer, adjustment layer, and layer mask. Now let's turn the second one on. Okay, so um, with this I'm lighting up the inside of the flower, but I also have lit um, some of this background here, and I'm not sure I, I really want that. So once again, I'm going to create an adjustment layer, make it Command Option G to make it a um, clipping mask. Then go into this area here, and you can see I probably want a little bit more light here, but not a whole lot. And then I'm going to put the mask here. Again, get my black brush, make it kind of big, go back to here. And let's go to an opacity of say 30 percent 25 percent something like that and you can see how i can really nicely sort of even out the tones here so that we can see the increase in the inside of the flower let's open this up a little bit more that's pretty good. And again, I'll now I could I could decrease the effect using the mask on the adjustment panel, or I can take out things from the actual. So it's it's you've got two areas where you can change the intensity of a particular area. Light up another one. Now sometimes, so, oh there it is, it's pretty obvious it's the far side of the uh, uh, sand dial. And that to me seems a little bright because remember the lights for the most part coming up this way. So let's put another adjustment layer. Let's first put a mask here and then we'll put another adjustment layer. I'm going to use a curves this time. You can, and again, you want to make it a clipping mask. All right. Option, Command, G. And I'm just going to darken this a little bit, you know. That looks pretty good. Now, I know I, I did a, the next one should be the other side of the glass. So... You know, we've lightened things up. Now you're going to have to sort of use t both. Let's put another curves here. This may also want to come down a little bit, especially in the highlight. Oh, didn't do a clipping mask, and you notice that the whole thing changed. Yeah, there we go. What we're trying to do is not to have obvious shadows in the gr in the glass. So. You know, let's go back to the previous one here. Maybe we'll want to move that up a little bit. Yeah. See how it's changing slightly? And you just got to play with it until you get the right place. Now, I'm going to come back to here because I'm going to address the issues of the, of the um, uh, reflections on the glass by the light. But I'm not going to do that right now. All right, so here I've lit the top. That looks pretty good. I don't think we really have to change much in that. And here's the side. Okay, and the side, I think we need to bring that down. Let's put another curves layer. Bring the 
this down just a little bit. What I really want to do is bring that highlight down because I don't think we need that. Okay. Now that that's nice because the side of the box came in nicely. We can get that nice three dimensionality to the to the box. I don't think I have to do much of that. We might think about putting a um, another curves adjustment there, make it a clipping mask, and then um, put some contrast. Let's see how if we just turn it on and off. And I think I like it with it off, so I'm not going to change that. I'm going to just get rid of this. We don't need that. The last one is the background. Okay. Now, the background, I typically want to uh, put a curves adjustment on that because I want to usually um, decrease the, um, the overall uh, tone of the background and make it, again, a clipping mask. And I'm just going to drag this down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Now, there are a few things here that I, I really want to change. Now, this is basically where uh, what we're looking at. I, I can see I, I probably want to make the sand a little brighter. So let's, let's the, the, to find the layer that you want to look at, you sort of have to turn off things until you find the area. There we go. So that's one thing. So let's... Let's just make this a little bit brighter. Okay, that looks better. That's good. And I think this is the other one here. Again, let's make this a little bit brighter. Not too much, but that's pretty good. Okay. Now there's there's one area here. Now let's put the rest of them back on, and that's something that you have to be constantly doing. You're you're going to be going back and forth. Uh, till you get um, a picture that you really like. Now, one of the things I can see is that that bottle there, that probably needs some more light, because if you figure that the light's coming from um, the upper right, um, it, it's got to be a little bit more. So let's find out where the, that layer is. If I was really... Yeah, there it is. Okay, so looks like it's over here. So let's make this a little brighter. Now, if we make this brighter, we're going to have to really take out a lot of the area. So I'm going to invert this mask. Okay, if I just hit, uh, click on the mask and then press Command I. All right. Then I can take a white brush and just brush in the change. All right, now let's see how that looks. I remember I'm only at a, about a 50%. So look at the difference there. See, we've had a lot more um, light to the bottle. And in fact, I probably would like to even increase the, let's go back to this, and increase the contrast. So pull the white point in. And here's... Let's pull it black. No, uh, too much on that. So let's just mess with this at this point. So again, taking it off and on, that's pretty good. All right, I like that change. Okay, there are a couple of areas uh, over here that I want to sort of even out. And um, that comes from 
Let's see where that is. I'm guessing it's over here. Nope. Here, nope. Here, nope. There it is. Okay, so I think this is the same kind of thing that we want to do. What we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to get rid of this mask. No, get rid of the mask. I'm going to add a new one in, and I'm going to invert it to black. Command I. All right, so now, again, taking a white uh, brush, make it a little smaller. And we're about a third. I'm just going to bury, I'm going to only brush in to this area. And it's, it's always a good idea to sort of go a little bit at a time. You know, you don't want to create these halos. That might be a good idea if I just sort of went in here. Now you can see I did a little bit of a halo, so let's switch to black. Make the brush even a little smaller. Get rid of those halos here. It, it's really necessary to sort of keep going back and forth between black and white. You know, so I'm going to go back to white here, add in some more of that the effect of the adjustment layer so that this sort of pops out okay so let's yeah i think that's better okay now let's take a look at i only want that the way it is is this layer doing anything no. Yeah, there's the area that I'm really looking at. See, look at this area here. And when I turn this on and off, you can see it's creating this shadow here. And I've gotta I gotta correct that. Alright. Now, one way I could correct it, let's try it this way put a, a mask on there, make it black, make the brush a little bit bigger. And let's take out some of this here, see how that works. So this is before and this is after. That sort of evens it out a little bit. Let's go down here. Take some of this out too. Again, we want to even things out as much as we can. I'm not worried about the flower because the flower is actually exposed on a different layer. So once again, this is now, this is before. And I definitely like the way that's heading. Okay. All right, well, I think I'm going to stop at this point. Now, a very important thing to do is to save your work. And when you save this, this is currently a 2.5 gig file. Now, you know, part of the problem is my, is, is this is generated for the fact that the uh, Nikon D850 uh, gets, each, each file is 40 seven megapixels or something like that so that you know and if you have nine of them you can obviously see that that's a lot and then each of the masks and the um, uh, adjustment layers uh, create uh, issues also so I want to save this you will not be able to save it as a uh, Photoshop file or a TIFF file because it exceeds Photoshop's limitations. So in a second you're going to see Photoshop uh, give me a warning saying you need to change this to um, a 
what's called large document file. So here it is. So you, you want to uh, save it as a large file format called a PSB. You say OK, and we'll ask to put it in um, the correct place. Now, I'll tell you, um, it is very important to remember where you put these things because <laughs> I have frequently um, misfiled them. So be careful. Um, this is uh, the file that I'm using today because it's the date. Uh, it's a PSB and I'm going to hit save. Okay, so Photoshop has finally stopped <laughs> and uh, it's uh, 2.4 gigs. It's in, uh, saved in the right place. Now, now that I've got it saved as a PSB file, I can select all the layers and I can flatten it to create one uh, layer with all this. Now, you must do a save as at this point because you do not want to overwrite the PSB file. I want to create a TIFF file at this point so that I can um, do things like export it to um, Instagram or wherever I'm going to do something. But I want I, I also want to uh, have a TIFF file so I can do uh, things on a flattened um, layer stack. So save as and make sure you're not going to do it as a, as a large document file. You're going to do it as a TIFF file. Put it in the right folder and you save it. Now I don't have any image compression. All right, so now I've got a, a save file and that's 260 megs, which is a lot easier to um, deal with. At this point, we're done, uh, although really not, because now I can I can work on some other things to to get uh, a little completion on this. So for one thing here, I want to get rid of this um, glare on the. I use the uh, polygon tool to just create a little selection, and then I'm going to hit um, Shift Five and do a content aware fill and see how that works and Photoshop is magic so I can do the same thing here now some people use the lasso tool I sort of gotten to like this polygonal tool because it really gives me a lot of control It's sort of like the pen tool that we you know, hardly use anymore. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we've gotten rid of a lot of those little highlights. Now, if, if you, if we go back to uh, the flatten. You can see how much we've gotten rid of. Okay, now these I don't mind so much. Um, they sort of have have kind of a, a nice streak, and it sort of looks like the sand is coming down. Um, we can probably, you know, get rid of some of this stuff here. There's that funny little streak there. Now this is getting really picky, kind of thing. Let's see if we get rid of. This is why I like the polygonal tool because I can really control things. So that looks pretty good. Let's get rid of this little bunch of stuff here. I think I'll get rid of this one too. Right. That looked pretty good. There's a little spot down here that I somehow neglected. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, 
couple of other little things I want to get rid of. This would be very difficult to do on an unflattened file because you'd have to find it in multiple places. So that's why I like to do the um, cleanup uh, after I've done thing, uh, the... Okay. Now, what I like to do with these images is I, uh, after I've done with the cleanup, I create a second copy of this. And I send it through a, a plugin called Topaz Studio. I la label that one. And you'll see what this does. It, it's basically a sharpening and increase the in, uh, medium tone contrast. Sort of acts like a super clarity. And I use, um, I think the first one is probably the most important, is AI Clear, which is the thing that really sharpens everything uh, up. And the question is whether or not to use these two things, which are called precision detail and precision contrast. Now, just to show you what it is, I'll t turn this one off. And you can see that the, the mid-tone contrasts really um, uh, are pumped up uh, with this particular slider. You can see there's this, um, you know, if I wanted to get rid of sort of the um, smallest contrast, I can decrease the macro and then pump up the others. And it sort of gets to the same uh, idea. Um, I don't like the, the effect of the increased contrast uh, on the background. That's what uh, the micro seems to do. So uh, I'm going to go in with, now again, I don't like this at all. That, that halo business would drive me nuts. So I've got to sort of go back and get, you know, I want the increased contrast, but I don't want it enough to cause that halo. Okay. The third thing is this um, detail, and it sort of sharpens everything up. Again, it's it's more of one of these uh, contrast things. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. In fact, in this one, I'm not going to use it because, again, it seems to create um, uh, a little bit of a halo, and I want to avoid that. So I'm just going to get rid of that one. So this... I'm going to save. It doesn't take too long because remember we're dealing with a pretty uh, smallish file. All right, so here it is on top of the original. So here's the original. Here's the one that the added contrast. Now, there are some times when uh, what I'll do is uh, put a mask on this and um, mask out certain areas, you know, because I, I like the way the original was. For example, I like the way the original is in the bottle. So if I take a black brush, make it a little bit bigger, make sure I got the brush, and I'm just going to create a little bit of a mask here so that I I'm brushing in the original, you know, kind of like that. I might even do it a little bit more. Let's take the opacity of the brush up to about 60%. And sometimes I just, you know, I look at these things and I say, you know, I, there's certain areas where I just don't like them the way it, it came out. So I might brush it out here. Okay. Now, to this, we can also add adjustment layers, and I think a hue saturation layer is a good idea. We want to pump up the greens in particular. Well, let's just increase the saturation a bit. That looks that looks good. I like that. We go to the greens in particular. Yeah, that's good. I don't want to pump up the the magentas anymore, 
Um, so that's that's pretty good. Now the question is, do I need a overall curves adjustment? And sometimes this is worthwhile. So I got you know, take the highlights and shadows. Yeah, I think I like that. It just just touches it up a little bit. So here we have. You know, I, know, I just noticed something here. That's that's good. All right. Now we save this again. And we're done. Hope this helps.